Hello, Emil. Thank you for coming in to do this interview. Uh, we're really excited to have you here. Can you tell us a little bit about um, yourself and how you joined the Eternity Project? How did I join Eternity Project? I think, um, so I have a background in developing consumer-facing applications before, and um, I think around uh, three, four years ago, we were a bit um, running a studio in Berlin, a bit at a point where we said, okay, this we did now for a couple of years, but it is not really exciting for us anymore. And um, we started more as a hobby to explore this blockchain space and this mm -hmm. idea of decentralization. And um, we're really, really uh, amazed by it, what you could do, but we didn't, we did not initially see that there are any opportunities to run our, our studio in the space. And then um, I got to know Yanni and Emin, and they asked me if we could uh, prototype some applications and see um, to find out also a bit what Eternity could look like or mm -hmm. how applications mm -hmm. might work. And um, yeah, we were very excited to do that, and um, that's how I got in touch. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. and. So I know you're instrumental in bootstrapping the um, the front side or the client side of, of the ecosystem, meaning the apps and the SDKs and uh, the middleware. Um, now that um, Eternity's, in, uh, Eternity's intention is to transition towards uh, the grand goal of decentralization and also hopefully uh, adoption, um, can you... Um, kind of say what what that means for you and also what what is um like how do we make sure that we go from this thing that you know was facilitated largely mm -hmm. by yourself and, and a handful of other people i mean i know many people worked on it but but the kind of it was um you know you go from something that was maintained by a few people and then kind of let it live on its own how what does that look like and you know how do you see it um, developing to its full potential okay I mean, for me, personally, this is very exciting. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you know, I was taking care of a lot of facilitation mm -hmm. yes. and um, balancing different interests from different groups before. But I also reached uh, my limits, of course, <laughs> with, with more teams joining the mission, um, working on the application layer, also mm -hmm. my capa capabilities to draw up architectures, how things and components yeah. could talk to each other and um, so the efforts we do now to have an like uh, open repository for common standards and best practices mm -hmm. is for me um, the best way to go there and I really hope that also a lot of people are going to adopt this and see the benefits of uh, agreeing on this common standards and mm -hmm. of course I hope I will be around to also mm -hmm. still try to help to facilitate this uh, this process, but I think that is the um, so the the this decentralization also in the in the uh, form how the project is run also uh, offers a lot of opportunities to scale. Yeah, so I think a few things will take longer mm -hmm. than like if you develop them traditionally, but um, it is maybe not the the most efficient way for a single project, but for the whole ecosystem, I think it's, uh, it's a way uh, to go and also um, to, to scale it up and make it really open for a lot of people to um, mm -hmm. developers and builders to join this, this mission. So I know like n nowadays a lot of what's uh, used to be decided on by the Anstalt is now coming from the foundation, they're handing grants and you know, have in that sense a lot of influence. Mm -hmm. Are you Working like somehow with them to you know to to make sure they're <laughs> giving the, <laughs> the money to the right people or is it like uh, we spoke something about it like a board or advisor like how mm. what does that look like to make sure that you know the funds are going and the things are going in the right direction basically <laughs> so I'm as opposed to just a direction <laughs> yeah um, so I'm personally not. Um, don't have any. Um, you don't have a formal. I position. don't have a formal yeah, position. The the foundation is someone who knows. I think still a lot of components and teams who are working in the yeah. ecosystem quite well. 
um, of course, I'm there to also help to yeah, give to consult, uh, make to consult if if necessary. But on the uh, other hand, I mean, we have also teams that are now working um, still there. So I think there's also a bit like a natural like um, separation mm -hmm. of this. Yeah. I think um, how this. Uh, shall be governed is, I think, and as, as far as I understand, that is also the idea of the foundation to have um, go also a little bit with the people who are actually building uh, things on top of eternity on the application layer, and they have certain needs, and we should try to um, to match them mm -hmm. um, to develop traction. Of course, this always. Um, also requires us to think a little bit ahead and make useful proposals. What could be the next thing, and then uh, see how the how the community is, is working with that. If we if we hit maybe their request or not. So I don't think it works with like we're just waiting and see what the people are proposing. And I mean I know for example. I see. There's an aspect of solicitation, or kind of it's not just yes, like so, and it's like what do we need too? Not, of course, not just <laughs> what's out there. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and um, and think a little bit ahead. And of course, there's also I mean a lot of um, the technology is still and the protocol under development, yep. and uh, so you have to consider a lot of different things and somehow facilitate them also in your your proposals for the for the foundation. Um, on one hand what is happening there at the protocol, these are things uh, we have to, right, they need to follow, and on the yeah. other hand, what are the requests for people out there, <laughs> and uh, how can we match Hopefully this? they have something and in common, also yeah. In, uh, how can we match this, and what's also like the kind of fast way to adoption mm -hmm. here? So uh, I'll ask you the, the million dollar, the million Bitcoin question. It's, it's okay if, if your answer doesn't play out in, you know, in, it, with too much accuracy, but like, how do you see, you know, everyone's talking about adoption and, you know, crypto being potentially very big and you know as, as kind of a, mm. a kind of alternative to current systems are we do you think that we're like you know this adoption uh, hopeful future are we talking like two years ten years like how mm. close do you think we actually because uh, people say oh it's like you know internet 93 but you know is it ten years away is it mm. like uh, how how close or far do you actually see this as like uh, from your perspective of course and I, I know that we both spend a lot of time to think about the <laughs> yes. user experience <laughs> yeah. of uh, blockchain applications and I think we are there we are still in the in the very beginning I mean okay. uh, if you look now at interface you really have basically every smart uh, contract function mapped to buttons sometimes yeah. yeah so that and we know from our experience how things develop in the traditional web that that might not be the ideal yes. thing still since once we want to uh, change this, we we see there's a lot of uh, uh, technical dependency and things we have to change in a lot of places to uh, uh, to change this. So I think that will um, um, that will take some time. I think also there are, um, probably some use cases that are easier um, to catch where you can also. Do, um, Get a bit faster to um, to adoption, and for example, one of the technologies that is now introduced uh, with an eternity called generalized accounts, where you're way more flexible as a developer how you authenticate a transaction instead of uh, not only a simple uh, signing method mm -hmm. with a with a key. I think that could uh, also develop. Um, Open a whole new field of making uh, user-friendly blockchain applications run on eternity. Exactly. So you're basically saying that once the technology is sufficiently involved, it will open up the opportunity for uh, for the UX to be at least as good, if not much better, than the current alternatives. Then we can really talk yes. about adoption. Yes. And I think there uh, we're on a really good way there, and um, that is for me also very exciting to see. And I think also in the common standards and best practices mm -hmm. and the expansions that uh, saw already that a lot of people are thinking about making proposals that go in this yeah. direction and really lower the entry barrier yeah. for users into the blockchain space. 
Yeah, and, so. and we saw yesterday, you know, the Lexon project, type in your smart contracts, and Nikita wants to put out the fire editor to print code. So, I mean, not that that's the, the final solution, but like we have uh, kind of yes. uh, providing more accessibility to people yes. who want to jump on. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to have you. Um, and yeah, looking forward to uh, getting the expansion stuff and, and the decentralization in, in, in action together. Thank you.